Yo, 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 what is up, YouTube Raw Dating Advice? Welcome to today's episode of the Raw Dating Advice podcast. Obviously, we were filming live on YouTube, so if you're checking out the replay or you are listening to this on wherever you listen to podcasts these days, um, just know you can join us on Thursdays. We'll always post the time. Today, we're going early, live a little bit earlier than we have been the last couple weeks, but um, you will always be notified uh, if you are subscribed to us on YouTube. So just wanted to throw that in there, but today is a very exciting episode because in this episode, what I want to tell teach you is something that I've taught in a few places in my online courses and trainings and a few of our eBooks and stuff. Um, and it's something called the DTF formula. And this is big because I want to teach it to you because a lot of you guys seem to really be interested in making your conversations more attractive. And literally this morning I wrote an email Q and a, uh, answering a guy who emailed a question about his conversations with a girl online. And I gave him a lot of amazing raw dating advice and feedback on his question. But Basically, this seems like a very relevant topic that I know you guys will get a lot of value from, and it's a very simple formula that I promise you, if you just did nothing but apply this to your current conversations with girls, no matter where they are, even if they're a text message conversation, these are the principles that get a girl's attention on you and make her attracted to you and get her chasing you in the moment as well. All right, so remember this, conversa or this conversation formula, and it's just three steps, all right? And that is where DTF comes in. So let me <clears throat> let me ask you this. Do you know what DTF stands for? Right? Let me know in the comments. Do you know what DTF stands for? If you looked it up on Urban Dictionary, what would you find? Obviously, it stands for down to fuck, right? And so this is an acronym that we're gonna be talking about. And so the first step is D, all right? Now this one stands for disqualify. And here's why disqualifying is important. And I wanna tell you a little bit of a, a little bit of a legendary story. I'm not sure if this actually happened. I first read it in a book that was written well over a decade ago, but uh, this book was talking about being successful in life. And it gave a really interesting anecdote uh, uh, call, uh, it was about Donald Trump. Now, regardless of if you like Donald Trump or not, this has nothing to do with your political beliefs, all right? But there's an old legend that says that Donald Trump was basically getting into one of his buildings um, and he was about to take the elevator all the way up to the top floor. And as he gets on the elevator, he's the only one on the elevator. And right as the door is shutting, a really hot blonde girl slips onto the elevator and she gets on the elevator, happens to be going up to a, the very top floor as well. And as they're riding up in this elevator, let me ask you this. This. Have you ever been in an elevator where it's just you and another person and you guys are silent the whole time? Isn't that like a lot of awkward tension, right? So just know that when you have that type of tension between two people, especially on an elevator, it's the same type of tension if it's between a man and a woman. That tension is always also combined with a little bit of sexual tension, right? So moral of the story here, um, before I finish the, the anecdote about Trump, is there's always a little bit of underlying tension between men and women, especially sexual tension. Now this is important because as Donald Trump is riding up the elevator with this really hot blonde chick, um, she turns to him and she goes, holy shit, you're Donald Trump. And he goes, yeah, <laughs> like kind of confused. And she goes, I could strip myself naked right now and I could ravish your body and you could ravish mine and nobody would even have to know, right? Just cause it's you and me on this elevator, right? And he thinks about it for a second, ponders it, looks her up and down. And then he says, but what's in it for me? So there's a very important lesson here is in that story, Donald Trump, who had the power in that situation? Who was chasing who in that situation? And that's a very important question to ponder because a lot of times I see a lot of guys letting women lead whether they realize it or not. You know, the conversation uh, question that I got on today's email talking about who's leading the conversation, he was asking me, or he was basically talking about a conversation he had with a girl online. This girl messaged him first. Uh, she started the conversation asked him what, you know, 
uh, I don't know how, how things have been because they apparently hadn't talked in a while. And then they talked for online for like two hours straight. And then she ended the conversation first. And then he was asking me, should I, should I text her back or should I wait for her to start the conversation? Should I ask her out? And I'm like, dude, you're waiting for signs or permission to ask this girl out. You're waiting for signs or permission to lead the conversation forward, to ask her to want to see you in person and move this conversation offline and in person. And I'm like, who's leading this interaction right now? Right. And if you saw one of my videos that I posted earlier this week about the breakdown of too hot to handle that show on Netflix, um, one of the mistakes was the guy, David, um, was letting this girl Chloe lead the conversation, bring up all the sexual topics in the conversation, tell him he's not allowed to kiss her. And it was like a fun role play, but she was the one creating the role play. Like who's leading this conversation, right? And just going back to that example, who was leading that Donald Trump or her? She was the one hitting on him and he was the one who maintained the power. And he said, but what's in it for me? He wasn't so easily sold. And I think that's the moral of the story here is you don't want to be so easily sold because if there's one word, Word that most women cannot resist it is the word no why is that because if she's a high value hot chick more often than not she's getting told yes yes come over here you can do this you can get this for free you can get this guy to take you on a date he can do all these things to romance you hot women high value women rarely if ever hear the word no so just by telling her no alone, regardless of the fact of that you're disqualifying her, just the simple fact that it's a pattern interrupt, it's a break away from the norm of what she's used to, it gets her attention onto you immediately, right? One of the things I was talking about with a coaching client a couple days ago on one of her coaching calls, which by the way, if you want my help with this stuff, there's a link below to book a free strategy, strategy session with me. Um, if you want to go a little bit deeper with me and see if I can help you create a custom action plan for you and your life. So the link is uh, below in the description of this video. But going back on track here on our coaching call, we were basically talking about, you know, the concept of small talk. And this is a guy who's really getting out there, putting himself out there, getting used to um, just being in social interactions and more importantly, leading conversations. And for him, he's not really, you know, well versed in conversation. And so in conversations, he naturally does what most guys do, which is resorts back to the framework of small talk. You know, at this point uh, in my game progression, I cannot stand small talk. Why? Because I've approached so many women and I've used small talk in a way that's to my advantage. Here's what I mean. And, and the reason why I can't stand it is because I've done it so much that it's like, now I just need something different, something interesting to stimulate even and me in conversation. So it actually makes me harder to impress in conversation, but that's a side note. All right. So going back to this, I said, dude, small talk is not a bad thing, right? Interview mode is not a bad thing. Most guys think this is a terrible thing to do in conversation. And in fact, I would recommend against it if you can avoid it. However, um, if you're, if you're not quite sure what to do with conversation. It's not the fact that you're doing interview mode or small talk type of questions like, how was your day? If you ask someone, how was your day or how are you doing? What is most people gonna say, right? A hundred times out of a hundred times, you're probably gonna get the answer. Oh, I'm good, how about you, right? Am I wrong? Change my mind on that in the comments, right? No, obviously, right? That's what happens is, hey, how's your day? Or how have you been? What's up? Oh, I'm pretty good, how are you? It's just a stock response, right? But then where does that go if this is the first time you're talking to this girl? It goes, okay, what's your name? What do you do for a living? Uh, why do you do that for a living? Who are you here with? These are like what we what we would call as data seeking questions. You're just seeking data. And because it's like literally the lowest hanging fruit type of conversation you can have, it means there was zero effort put into going after this conversational thread because it's just like the most obvious thing that you can. It's so obvious that you can just use muscle memory. It's like conversational muscle memory to have an entire conversation. And because of that one fact alone, I'm probably not going to remember anything that was said because we're just giving stock responses. How was your day? It was good. How about yours? Oh, it was pretty good. Oh, what do you do for a living? Oh, I do this. What about you? Oh yeah, I do this. And it's just data. It's boring. It's forgettable. And because it's, it takes no mental effort and energy. And it's literally the lowest hanging fruit type of conversation that you can have. And she had to put no thought effort into answering these questions, 
then you become not memorable. I don't care if you get a number. I don't care how long the conversation goes. It's not memorable. It is the exact same conversation she could have with any other number of guys out there. So just for the simple fact alone that when you tell a girl no or you disqualify her, that it interrupts her pattern, just the simple fact that it's not something that she's used to immediately means that she has to put mental effort into thinking about how she wants to respond. And that one little step alone, that one extra step to where she has to go, wait, I can't give this stock response. All right, so what do I say here? It doesn't matter. That one thing alone is what gets her attention onto you because now she has to mentally think, what do I wanna say to this situation that doesn't happen to me every day? So just from the simple fact that it's a pattern interrupt alone makes it stand out more than most of these conversations alone, right? So bare minimum, think about how you can be interrupting girls' patterns and stuff, but also, start disqualifying girls. Now I say this because a lot of you guys, especially if you're starting out, especially if you don't have an environment uh, with anybody who you can model as a good model for how to have good game, or maybe you haven't even bought my book, 107 Proven Ways to Get the Girl Yet, which I don't know why, because it's free and it talks a lot about the concept of creating sexual tension and conversation, but one of those things, one of those proven ways of the 107 in the book is disqualifying girls. Now here's why it's so important because the moment you tell a girl no, the moment you refuse to be so easily sold on her when most guys are so easily sold on her is the moment again, she has to put mental effort into this conversation. But now remember that, that thing that we were talking about earlier, how there's already, if you put yourself and another woman in a room by just you and her, there's already an underlying level of sexual tension there just because of the fact that you are man and she is woman, right? Understand it. Whether you want to deny it or not, it doesn't make it make it less true. All right. It is a fact. Men and women naturally have a uh, underlying tension between them. And when you can interrupt her pattern and more importantly, disqualify her, tell her that she can't handle you. Tell her that, oh, well, what would be in it for me? What can you offer me above just having good looks and sex, right? When you become so not easily sold on her, now it's very easy for you to amplify that tension that's already uh, underlying between you and her because you are man and she is woman. And so the moment you amplify that tension is the moment now that her attention is already on you because you interrupt her, her pattern. But now because you amplified the sexual tension, now there's man to woman intent in there. And man to woman intent is very important because if you've ever had a platonic conversation and those conversations didn't turn into dates, they didn't lead anywhere. She wasn't that attracted to you or it led to you getting friend zone or it led to you getting ghosted. It means that you might as well have been a dickless Ken doll. You might as well have been smooth down there. You might as well went Mel, you might as well have been one of her girlfriends because there was zero man to woman intention between you guys. Meaning that underlying level of sexual tension that's already existent basically might as well have not been there. You were killing tension just by not interrupting her pattern and being too easily sold on this girl. Cause let me ask you this. If you know nothing about a, a girl, you've never met her in person. All right. Even if you feel like you've talked to her a lot, but you've never met her in person, would you sleep with her, right? You think she's hot, all right? She seems like she's really cool. You've talked a little bit online. Would you sleep with her, yes or no? If you had the chance right now to sleep with that chick, would you sleep with her, yes or no? All right, let me know in the comments, would you sleep with her? Because here's the thing. If your answer is I don't know or not yet, if, if it's anything other than that, if you say, yeah, I'd sleep with her, she's fucking hot, I'd love to put my, my dick in between that, right? If you're thinking things like that, you're too easily sold. What if she's crazy? What if she's a serial killer? What if she's a psychopath? What if she's really a dude? You don't know these things. You're too easily sold. So at least give yourself the chance to find this out by meeting up with her in person and having that conversation and letting her qualify herself to you, right? And this is another part that I feel like doesn't get talked about quite often. Yeah, I mean, we do talk about qualifying women, but here's what we don't talk about. Why is it so fucking important for you to qualify girls? It's not because you're actively showing showing her that you're not easily sold so you can disqualify her, right? And obviously you're, when you disqualify her, you tell her no, you do it in a playful way, right? You can, you can do it in a non-playful way and yes, it will create tension, but will it create the right type of tension that you want? Not quite.
quite. The right type of tension is it almost seems like you're kind of joking with her. If she can't tell if you're joking or being serious, then you've hit that sweet spot, right? But if she thinks you're a dickhead or something because you disqualified her, maybe you can be a little bit more playful and vice versa, right? So you're constantly course correcting, but once once you hit that sweet spot, you know you've hit it because she can't quite tell if you're joking or not. And that a little bit of uncertainty adds more attention to her. It adds more excitement for her. It adds, um, the plot thickens, if you will, um, to the story between you and her, right? And any good story has to have tension. A story with zero tension is a boring fucking story. So remember these things as you're having those conversations with these girls. But here's why qualifying women is so important because it gives her the chance to feel like she's earned it. It gives her the chance to win you over, right? It's kind of like if you applied for a job and you went in for an interview, what they're doing is they're looking for a candidate with the right qualities. It's kind of similar with your dating life. You're looking for a candidate, a woman who meets the qualities that you're looking for in a woman that go beyond her physical attributes. Is this making sense? Is this resonating with you guys? If it is, let me know with the thumbs up button, right? So, Here's why this is important because what a lot of guys think is women want to be chased. A lot of guys think women want to be romance. They want a knight in shining armor. Not true at all. That's what the mainstream would have you believe. That's what any romantic comedy would have you believe. But in reality, if that's the if that's the strategy that you have for success, it's going to be a very long road for you because you're going to get friend zoned a lot. All right. And perfect example. Go back and look at the last video we posted with the breakdown of that show on Netflix called Too Hot to Handle. You'll see very clearly with your own eyes how women respond to the differing strategies that we're talking about here. Do you want to chase women? If you chase women, how did that work out for the guys in that video, right? Versus if you make her chase you or you can frame it and we'll get to this in a second as if she is the one chasing you. That's the key because here's what most guys don't realize and they actually think it's the exact opposite when this is the reality here. Women love the chase. Why do they love the chase? Because they want to feel like they've earned it. Right? And it's kind of like if you've ever been to the gym and you've done a really good workout, you're like dripping in sweat, it was grueling, it was hard, but during that workout, you almost went into a trance state, you got into your zone, and then after the workout, you're dripping in your sweat, your body is exhausted, but here's the thing, how do you feel in that moment? The majority of you guys who have actually experienced a good workout, right? Some of you guys need to start working out a little bit more, but that's okay as long as you can admit it, right? But some of you guys who have experienced that really grueling workout, you know by the end of it, you feel amazing. You feel like life cannot bring you down. You feel like you're on top of the world. And yeah, they call it like the, the runner's high, the euphoria you get from a very uh, good workout, an intense workout. But that same euphoria, why do you feel that way? It's because you know you put in the work. You know you deserve that feeling. It's the light out at the end of the tunnel. Women at the end of the day want that light at the end of the tunnel moment, right? They want that light at the end of the tunnel. So when you disqualify girls, not only does it give her the opportunity to chase you, which is what she wants, because when she finally does get the chance to win you over, now it's like she just completed that really tough workout. She earned it. She got that prize, that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. But here's the key. It has to be a light at the end of the tunnel. And what I mean by that is some guys will hear, okay, I got to disqualify girls, but then they overthink it and they start thinking, well, I just got to keep disqualifying her and I keep got to got to keep pushing that disqualify button and tell her that I'm not so easily sold. If you keep disqualifying a girl and you've probably experienced this, which if you haven't experienced it, go out and just disqualify the fuck out of a girl because I think it's a very valuable feeling for you to understand what's it like to push it too far because if you keep hitting that disqualify button and you keep pushing her away, we call it push pull for a reason because at some point you got to pull her back in, right? And when you pull her back in is by being sold on her after she qualifies. So here's how it goes. You disqualify. You're not so easily sold. She says something and it kind of makes you think a little bit less of her, but you imply it in a playful way like, 
oh, you do that? Oh, you definitely just went down a notch in my book. So that puts you at like notch one, right? You say something like that, I promise you it'll feel like, oh, I was winning him over, but now he just disqualified me. You say with a playful tone, now it creates that sexual tension. And here's the thing, the moment that she feels that tension that you said no, it's like a job interview interviewer saying, well, let's look at this. You did have this bad remark at your last job. What do you say about that? And what are you going to do? If you really want the job, you're going to start what? Qualifying yourself. You're going to start selling yourself. And that's what we want the women to be doing in conversation. So many of you guys think, okay, if it's the exact opposite, I got to be the one showing her my worth. I got to say, but I'm a good looking guy. I get all this kind of money. I do all these things. And here's the thing. Here's why I think this is fucking important. Because if you start qualifying yourself, now you're intentionally putting yourself in the passive part or the more feminine role in this conversation. And here's what irks me. Here's what irks me. And here's why we've been going live every fucking week for the last couple months. It's because I see motherfuckers calling themselves dating experts online. And these motherfuckers talking about how, yeah, if you got, if you want to attract girls, you got to show her how financially stable you are. I'm telling you what, if you, if we're talking in pure terms of attracting women, women are not attracted to your fucking monetary level. They don't give a fuck about what's in your bank because if that's what's coming up in the first conversation you're having with this girl, you're not building real attraction. What you're doing is you're luring her in with the wrong type of bait. Do you want to have to pay girls to fucking be attracted to you? Or do you want to actually get them attracted to you based on human to human interaction, social dynamics? So here's the thing. I say this from experience because I've been a guy who has attracted a lot of fucking women in my life at times when I was very fucking broke. All right. So it doesn't go hand in hand. You can attract women when you are broke and you can attract women when you are rich just like you can turn women off when you're broke and just like you can be a rich dude who turns the fuck off of women right so it has nothing to do with the amount of money in your bank it has to do with what does this convey to me about this guy's value in the marketplace of men out there so many men are going to qualify themselves to girls so many men are going to um, wait for women and disqualify him so he's the one chasing her and because of that, they're they're actually pushing girls away from them because they're taking the feminine role in the conversation and they're killing any tension that was already there. The tension that was already existing between you and her because you are man and woman, that masculine feminine polarity. The moment you disqualify girls and you can make it genuine as a disqualification for something you're really not looking forward to uh, in a girl that you want to date, then now it becomes a real thing for her. And now that you're the one pushing her away, what does it say? about you. It says that you probably have options or you probably at least believe in your ability to create options. That way you can, uh, that way, like that makes you more of a, a scarce resource, right? As far as men and the resourcefulness of men and how many men she could potentially get. Now you become the one who's retreating away from her. And now that makes her want you more in the moment. So disqualify the first part of the DTF formula. Very, very important. And don't discount the fact that disqualifying women in a way that's realistic to you and in a way that once she qualifies herself to you, you now are, you can still qualify yourself to her, but only as a reward for her qualifying to you, right? So if you, if she opens up to you about something emotional or uh, says something that she likes about herself, right? Something like that to get her to, as a form of qualifying to you. And it's always qualifying to you if she's doing anything she can or saying anything in a way that tries to make her look like she's in a more positive light in your eyes, that's a form of quali qualifying. She wants you to like her, right? Which is a good thing. You want, you want her to want you to like her, right? And so you can still do the same thing back and in return, but only as a reward for her investment into you. Now it becomes you're the one leading and she's the one qualifying to you first and you're rewarding that investment is you're giving her a light at the end of the tunnel. The moment you don't give her the light at the end of the tunnel is the moment that the interaction kind of fizzles out and she gives up. All right. So that brings us to the next one, which is timing. Let's talk about the timing of when you should be disqualifying women from the very first moments that you possibly can. All right. Going back to what I was saying on the, on the coaching call, um, I recommended him use interview mode to your advantage by finding like by re understanding that okay if she's expecting me to go this way because most guys would go this way and this is how this small talk conversation usually goes 
use that knowledge to your advantage. Think a few moves ahead. So um, if you can see that, hey, the conversation is about to go here, you can say, all right, before it gets there, I'm going to interrupt her pattern by disqualifying her. And so the earlier you can do that, the better, because here's the thing. If you're connecting with girls, if you're qualifying and disqualifying, you ideally don't even want her to really start heavily qualifying herself to you unless she's doing that on the foundation of attraction, right? So if she's qualifying from the very first moment. Yeah, it's kind of passively passively building a little bit of attraction, but you have to, you have to, you have to really make sure that it is understanded, uh, that you and her are talking right now because you're having like a, a banter filled conversation. There needs to be a little bit of banter to that conversation. And when I say banter, it's that playful back and forth. It's like literally two people in a ring, just jabbing at each other. You're just like throwing jabs and it's like a playful dance that men and women do, uh, energetically in conversation because it's, it's, flirtatious. That's just the nature of a flirtatious conversation is having that banter, having that back and forth. The moment you disqualify her, you're going to realize that there's a couple ways that she can respond. She's going to respond by either coming back at you by trying to like one up your, your line by having a little bit of a better line than you, um, which is good because most guys will freak out in that situation and think, oh shit, I don't have an even better line than that. That's fine, but just understand the energetic dance has started. As long as you initiate the dance, that's that's the good part, right? Because now you guys are doing that little energetic dance, the banter, the back and forth, and that's what really creates the vibe. Because at the end of the day, the content behind the words that you guys are speaking back to each other, back and forth to each other, you, you're probably not even going to remember the next day specifically what was said. All that really, at the end of the day, really matters here is the energetic level. What's happening here? Are we bantering or are you just a random guy who's coming up to this girl for no reason and you kind of get nervous and then just leave real quick? You're like, imagine from a girl's perspective, right? Imagine this. You're sitting at a fucking coffee shop and uh, you're, you're minding your own business and then some dude walks up to you all awkwardly and nervously and kind of says, hey, what's your name? And you just you kind of say your name and he goes, Oh yeah. Okay. Well, what do you do? All right. Yeah. Okay. Well you have a good day. And then he just walks away and you're sitting there thinking to yourself, if you're the hot chick putting yourself in her shoes, you're thinking, what the fuck was that? Why did he just randomly fucking interrupt me for no reason? Right. And so if you're approaching girls in public, understand that by not by not starting the dance the banter back and forth she's gonna think e either this guy wanted to abduct me <laughs> or um or he wanted to sell me something or he was too fucking nervous to, to start the dance because he was attracted to me so really the only way you win here if you don't if you want to think about it logically is by at least attempting to start the banter by disqualifying her by teasing her by interrupting the pattern of that normal small talk conversational flow the direction that most people would generally go in just by simply interrupting her pattern alone is going to add and amplify some of that tension so timing as soon as fucking possible right and again light at the end of the tunnel also plays into the timing and also here's the other thing that I that I want to throw in here is when you're thinking about how to sparky how to spark tension in conversation um, the timing of your delivery is also going to matter right and so if you're talking back and forth there's some small talk you learn a fact about her and then you you say Oh, oh, you rooted for the Patriots last year oh you and I could never be together right a playful disqualification like that it's going to, uh, there's, there's, there's a fine line between like how soon you drop the line and the congruency and the way you do it uh, and your tonality. These things kind of play together to give her a vibe of was that a scripted line or was it a poorly timed line where it just kind of pissed me off and made me mad at him or was it a well-timed line where the tonality was right and it was delivered with good timing um, to where it actually had the intended effect which was oh we're just busting each other's chops there's some playful energy between us and um, 
and then it had the desired effect, right? And so just like in, in dancing, right, where we're talking about the playful dance of banter in dancing, you know, there's, there's, it takes two to tango, right? So if we're doing the tango and your timing is off with your foot or your feet, yeah, maybe you guys are kind of dancing in the same direction, but you're still stepping on each other's toes, right? And so I mentioned this as an important example, because one, if we're thinking about where in the conversation should we di start disqualifying, you want to do it as soon as possible. Most guys wait too long long to start creating and amplifying tension. And two, as you're delivering this stuff, conversation to conversation, you want to constantly be improving the timing of your delivery of these lines. So having a few lines ready in your back pocket that you can deliver at a moment's notice, um, that kind of apply to a lot of general situations like, Oh, uh, insert fact that you just learned about her. We can never be together or, you know, any, any number of the things that I teach and how to get, uh, 107 proven ways to get the girl. Um, if you can work on the delivery uh, of like how soon after you deliver the line that you learn the fact about her as just an example, um, that's something that you're going to experiment with. So experiment with it, engage her reaction based off of what was the vibes you were getting from her once you delivered the lines. Did she get super offended? Did she start laughing? Did she playfully hit you on the arm? Um, how, how often, uh, or how did the conversation end, right? Things like this. This is all important stuff. And so you're going to constantly be course correcting, but they call it quick witted for a reason, because if you're quick witted, then, um, that really means that you do it as soon as you can. So I learn a fact about her, the faster you can drop that line with a playful tone that seems congruent to how you actually feel in the moment, then that's where, um, the, the best timing is going to come in. So if you like hesitate or you pause, it's always going to come off a little bit, uh, with a less than intended result that you wanted. Um, Angel says, can you, can, and how can I get the 107 proven ways to get the girl book? The 107 proven ways to get the girl book. Uh, good question. The link is in the description below this video, or if you just remember how to get the girl now.com. And, and the last part now is important, right? It's not just how to get the girl.com. It's how to get the girl now.com, right? Do you want her now or do you want her like maybe eventually, right? So we want her now, how to get the girl now.com because here's the thing, attraction, just like for you, when you, when you become attracted to a girl, how long does it take you to realize that you're attracted to her? It's probably instant, right? But it's a visual cue for women. It's not, it, it, there is some visual aspect, but the visuality, like how good looking you are, it's only going to buy you maybe 30 more seconds than the average looking dude. Because at the end of the day, good looks just gets her immediate attention onto you. But at the end of the day, like we saw in the two hot to handle breakdown, good looks will only buy you so much time. Eventually your true colors are going to show meaning or what is your strategy for trying to attract this girl? Are you going to chase or are you going to make her chase? Because at the end of the day, she wants to be the one chasing you. And so attraction for her, the moment you initiate the dance and conversation, that's the moment her attraction is sparked for you. Because simply, you know, you know I, I used to talk about this a lot with a lot, a lot of my uh, roommates uh, when we used to go picking up chicks together and approaching chicks together, um, back in the day, uh, we would often say that during the day, if you're in a non-social environment, simply the fact that you approached her is an attraction trigger alone, simply because most guys would not have the balls to approach a girl in a non-social environment. But at night, if you're at a party and she spent two hours doing her makeup and hair, just to get ready so guys would hit on her, then do you think approaching her is gonna be enough to make you stand out? No, that's where you really have to hone in your conversational skills and having the right strategy for success, which is 107 proven ways to get the girl, teaches you 107 different ways to do this the right way in conversation. But also, if you already have the book 107 Proven Ways to Get the Girl and you really wanna learn more about this, uh, the topic of how to make your conversation seductive and attract attractive and have some of my go-to scripts, like full-on conversation scripts, as well as conversation frameworks, um, there's a program called Words That Make Her Want You that goes way deeper than the book ever could because it's a lot of video training as well. Um, um, and the link to that is also in the description if you want to check it out down below as well. So that is D.
And then T is timing. So we talked about the timing of when do you want to start the initiating the dance of banter and how soon do you want to drop the line in conversation and how soon should you be breaking her pattern in conversation? So if any of that was a little bit confusing or maybe you want a little bit more clarity, let me know in the comments, even if you're watching the replay. And oh, by the way, if you're one of the many people who happen to be listening to this on, pa on podcast format as well, um, go ahead and leave us a review on Apple or wherever you listen to podcasts. It definitely helps get the podcast and the show more exposure and is all I really ask if you really do like this information. And so before we get into the last part, the F of the DTF formula, um, let's go to read some comments or if you have any questions in your live, then ask me your questions now. Oh, by the way, um, oh yeah, Eric, you are right. We do have the link to that in the, the description below. Mr. Karakurt says, I have the book working on finishing it. Amazing, amazing. And like I said, the book is good because it gives you 107 literally different ways to spark attraction and conversation. But conversation itself has an entire strategy. And if you are not yet having attractive conversations, start with what we're talking about in this video. But just know there is a framework. Uh, I call it the seductive small talk blueprint. It's literally the framework from the moment you say hello to the moment she comes back to your bedroom to even the moments that she becomes your girlfriend, right? There's a strategy to these conversations and the strategies kind of shift the more uh, connection and rapport that you build with this girl. So over time. So anyways, if you want to go deeper on this topic of how to have attractive conversations and really become, uh, you know, a, a Casanova in conversation, um, check out Words That Make Her Want You. I highly recommend it. As of today, which we just released it a few months ago, back in January, uh, it is now officially the best-selling course on raw dating advice. And so, um, that's something to look forward to. We also have a lot of, uh, other good coaching options as well. So if you want maybe more personalized help, then what I would recommend for you, if you already have the book, you've, if you have words that make her want you, um, down below in the link or, or in the description below this video, there's also a link to book a free strategy session with me and I'll be able to do my best to point you in the right direction and even potentially come up with a custom action plan for you in your dating life to help you become the most attractive version of yourself. So, um, Eric says the book is amazing. There's also an audiobook too if you want to listen to it. I think the audiobook is good as well. Um, you can get it. I think that is you just check the box that says, hey, I want the audiobook as well when you order the book. Um, and, and honestly, I, I personally love listening to audiobooks like at the gym or in the car or on airplanes, things like that. Um, and plus, I read it myself. I've al I always hate getting audiobooks where the audiobook is read by someone who is not the author um, because some of the most enjoyable books I've ever personally listened to, I feel like the author has the freedom and the ability to start riffing on some of these topics that he wrote about um, off the book and in the audio, um, which is kind of the benefit of just reading the book and then kind of being able to elaborate as the author. So I did read the book myself and here's the thing. Uh, I do this for a reason to make my book more of a scarce resource. So people wanted more, which what at the end of the day gets raw dating advice, more exposure, because at the end of the day, this is all just comes down to human nature and influence. And so you won't be able to find this book on Amazon. Maybe we'll put it on Amazon in the future, but for right now, uh, it's self published. We distribute it from our warehouse. So yes, we have a warehouse. It's not like I'm physically, you know, shipping these books out to you myself, but I have a warehouse and this is a private warehouse and it's self published. And we do that for a reason because, um, we want to keep this book in scarce supply. So the only place you can get it is for my website, how to get the girl now.com. And that is also where you can get the audiobook version as well. So let's get right into it. Angel, how did you get so good on this topic? Taking a lot of fucking action, right? And here's the thing. You don't have to become a, a dating coach like myself, right? For me, my motivation at first was I was in such emotional pain from girls breaking my own heart um, that I wanted to really get good at this stuff. For me, it was both inspiration and desperation. I was desperate to improve because I didn't have those results, but I was inspired because it, for me, it was like, 
do or die time, right? Either I'm going to be the guy who ends up alone for the rest of my life, or I'm going to get this stuff figured the fuck out. And I remember at that time in my life, I was considering signing up for a site like eHarmony. I was going to do some online dating. And I was even telling my friend, I was like, yeah, you know, I'm not really getting any girls. It's like over 10 years ago at this point, but he was like, oh yeah, I think you should do online dating. And this is a guy who, by the way, got hella girls. He never had to think about online dating ever because he always had that abundance, right? So for him, he's like, yeah, whatever, you know? And so um, for me, luckily, that was around the time where I, I learned about, uh, you know, how to get into the game and, you know, the topic of attracting women and that my whole strategy for doing it was completely ass backwards. And so some of these insights I'm revealing to you today are the exact insights that it took for me to really get jump started in my own dating life. And then from there, I take massive action. For a while, you take massive action because you get results, it becomes fun. And the version of you who used to think, oh, this girl's the one for me and I wanna do everything for her and she's my soulmate. Well, once you start getting results and you realize, oh shit, I probably pushed her away because my strategy was ass backwards. Now you start having fun and you're like, why would I ever want to get in a relationship? And so you start going out, developing abundance, talking to a lot of women. You get addicted to the feeling of disqualifying women in conversation because they laugh, they become attracted to you. It becomes like a fun joke because now you can just literally make fun of chicks and they'll start liking you and becoming attracted to you and sucking your dick because of it. And so you stay there for a while. And so anyways, the moral of the story is a lot of guys, they kind of have fun doing that and then they live the bachelor lifestyle, which most guys would. But then for me, when I got so good at it, um, I became inspired to start giving back to guys like yourself. I wanted to help guys who are in my position. That way I could help guys come out of it because who knows where I would have ended up had I not learned these crucial things about making women attracted to you, right? I don't know if I would be anywhere close to the man I am today, um, especially raw dating advice would not be in existence. So for me, um, it's, it's still an ongoing journey. I'm always trying to improve. At first it became a thing of like, I want to be able to get the girls. Then when I could get the girls, then I wanted to be the best fucking coach in the world. And now I know my topic better than literally anybody else. And I promise you, most of these people, they looking at raw dating advice, whether they want to admit it or not. And now it's like, now I'm going for legacy. I want to help a million guys who are just like me, who are just like you really overcome this area, this sticking point in their lives. So they don't have to feel that kind of pain again. So you don't have to become a guy who goes the next 20, 30 years wondering, am I going to die alone? Am, am I going to be the guy who goes to bed by my, my by myself every night? I don't want that for you. I didn't want it for me. And so that's why I do what I do. And that's how I got so good at this stuff if that answers your question. So let's wrap this up. I got a thing going on here in about an hour, so I gotta get going here. So um, the, the last part, we covered D, we covered T, and then we covered, uh, now we're gonna cover F. So F stands for frame. Now we've talked about frames in a few videos in the past, but if you're not quite sure what a frame is, a frame is basically your worldview. What is your belief about the world around you and how does that affect the results that you get in your dating life? And so the classic example um, that I heard from Jim Rohn, who is a personal development guru who unfortunately has passed away, but he was really big in like the 70s and the 80s. And he used to always tell this story of two salesmen who wake up on a stormy day and they're door-to-door -door salesmen. And one one salesman sees the storm outside and he goes, you know what? That's a badass storm outside. I better stay inside today because you know, who can make sales on a day like this? And so that was his belief about the world and his worldview. Another salesman sees the same storm, wakes up on the same day, sees the storm and he says, wow, what a day to go out and make sales because I bet most everybody's going to be home for me to make sales to them especially the salesman. So there's gonna be less competition, right? And so that was his worldview who ended up succeeding at the business of sales at the end of the day um, with those different, different worldviews, right? And so obviously your frame plays a major role in the results that you get in your dating life. But here's also why it plays a major role. And here's the one point I wanna make about frames today is if you can do nothing but have the frame of, I'm the type of guy who women are always attracted to and you always act from that frame. If you've never met this girl, assume that if she met you, she would be into you. If you met her and you didn't see any signs of attraction, assume she was kinda into you. If you talk to a girl and she's laughing at you, 
some guys would say, is she laughing at me because she's making fun of me? Well, no, your new worldview, your frame is she's laughing because she's totally into me right now. I call it the Pepe Le Pew frame because it's like that skunk from uh, Looney Tunes and he would always be like thinking the girls were into him and so he would always kind of act from that frame and it was kind of like a fun thing. Well, if you can kind of assume that it's always on between you guys and the simple fact that she's engaging in conversation with you the simple fact that she's still standing here talking to you at least implies that she's a little bit more into you than she is the homeless guy who was just asking her for money on the street, right? So she's at least sees more value in you than that guy. So just alone, that alone is enough evidence for me to say that, oh, she's kind of into me right now. I can tell, right? And so if you can constantly act from that frame, here's why it's very important. And here is how the world starts shaping to that worldview. Because if you are talking to a girl and let's say you disqualify her and the timing was on point and she's got that attraction spiked and you're going, holy shit, this girl's totally into me. And the signs are very obvious, right? Well, just know every girl is 100% different from every other girl that you've ever met. Just like you are different from me, which is different from all the other guys who are on this call right now. Everybody's uniquely individual, uh, within their own right, right? And so every girl that you talk to, yes, there's some classic signs of attraction, but one girl who gets like super giggly and starts hitting you on the arm and wants to suck your dick immediately is going to respond probably differently than another girl who's a little bit more shy, a little bit more reserved, or maybe just more in control of her emotions. So maybe her reaction won't be over the top, but here's the thing that a guy who doesn't have this worldview would start thinking because he's uh, not quite sure of what his frame is in the moment. So his frame becomes reactive to the evidence that's going on around him. So the girl in front of him who responds positively, and it's very obvious, he goes, okay, that girl was into me. And so he starts acting from the frame of, okay, this girl must be into me. So I'm going to pretend or continue to act as, uh, as a guy who she would be into. Well, the girl who doesn't give him that big over the top reaction, you might assume if you didn't have this frame that, well, maybe this girl isn't into me. Maybe I'm doing something wrong here. And now, simply because that one little seed of self-doubt that she might not be as into you as the other girl, objectively, might not be true. She probably could be more into you than the other girl. But if you start acting from the frame of, wait, she might not be into me, then what happens? You stop doing the things as much that were getting her into you in the first place because now you're a man who's not certain, who's not acting with certainty, and who's not acting with full conviction and congruence in the frame that should be more dominant here, which is I'm the type of guy who women are naturally into. Now, here's the cool part about this frame. Even if you're getting different reactions from different girls and these girls, uh, whether they're into you or not and whether you can tell that they're into you or not, if you simply acted from that frame, now if there was any level of interest, be it more or less than the next girl or the previous girl, because you're still continuing to act from that frame, now whatever interest is there, which we've already said, there is already an underlying level of sexual tension between men and women, now you're actually capitalizing on any interest level that is actually there. And if you can constantly act from the frame of, I'm going to create or amplify sexual tension early on in the conversation, get her attracted to me. That's the timing of everything. And I'm going to hold this frame strong. Now you're the type of guy who naturally creates that chemistry out of thin air with girls, especially if this is the first time or the second time, or even the third time that you've met this girl, right? And here's what you find. Even if you continue this relationship with this girl for years, the moment you stop attracting her is the moment her attraction for you starts to fade. So this is a skill that is very crucial to not only getting the girl interested in you at this at the start, but the moment you stop doing this stuff is the moment you stop becoming the type of guy who can attract girls. So understand that these are the fundamentals of attraction here, all of which I teach on 107 proven ways to get the girl, and all of which I go deeper on, especially as it relates to what do you say in conversation in my program, Words That Make Her Want You, okay? And so... If you can just stick to this strategy and understand that whether you want to accept that these are the fact or not is irrelevant because it doesn't change the fact that these are the facts of what women actually respond to in conversation. And here's the cool part. Even if she wasn't into you, because your frame is stronger and that is your consciously chosen frame, now 
her frame will naturally start reacting to you, right? And the person who has the stronger frame always wins. So if your frame is your end to me and her frame is the exact opposite, I'm not into you. So even if there was zero interest there, what, what does that do? The moment you guys come together in conversation, a frame battle occurs. And here's the thing, this is happening in every conversation, but whoever has the stronger frame will always win. And you'll know who has the stronger frame because the other frame will start reacting to that stronger, more dominant frame. And here's the thing, most people don't know about frames and consciously choosing your frames, which means most people's frames are like fucking little leaves blown in the wind. Whichever way the wind blows, it starts going. Because because they haven't consciously chosen what frame they want to act from. Does that make sense? And so just by you consciously choosing, I'm going to act as if I am the type of guy who most women are generally responding to with attraction, and that is your consciously chosen frame to act from, not only do the line start naturally flowing because you're just kind of going into that character, and again, it's not, it's not like you're pretending to be someone you're not, you're just choosing what frame you want to have just by the simple fact that you're going into a conversation which with an intentionally chosen frame, and most people don't do that, will naturally make your frame stronger than most of the people that you meet. Does that make sense? So naturally, just by having this frame alone makes your frame stronger. And again, even if there's zero interest level, because your frame is stronger, it starts re reacting to yours. Now you're leading this conversation emotionally, logistically, and in your words with what we're saying from the, the D and the T part of the DTF formula. And now because her frame is responding to yours, just by you doing what we've talked about before, she will become attracted to you. Meaning that your frame literally shapes the world around you. It's literally forming how people view you right now because of your consciously chosen or unconsciously chosen frame. Because the results that you're getting in your dating life right this second are the exact results that you deserve in your dating life, right? You get the, resu the results that you deserve, right? The world is not yet a crazy enough place to reward a whole bunch of undeserving people. So if you want to have amazing results and uh, to get amazing results in your dating life, be the type of guy who deserves the results those results and the way you deserve those results is by taking massive action on everything we've talked about today. Does that make sense guys? Perfect. All right. So I'm going to get out of here. Hopefully you guys enjoy this one. Look out for my video coming out early next week, which is part two of the too hot to handle breakdown. Yes. We're going to finish the second half of that season. Cause, um, you know, there's a few extra juicy things that happens with a few extra new characters coming into the scene. Uh, if you haven't seen the show, then definitely look out for my breakdown. And if you have seen the show and you haven't yet seen part one, go back and watch that. I think you'll definitely enjoy it. In my opinion, it's easily one of the best videos on my channel easily. Um, and so look out for that next week. And then, uh, also we have an upcoming boot camp. If you want to come to our boot camp next month, I believe as of this morning, we have one spot left. One spot left. So whoever wants it, if you want to come work with me and the 19 other guys at our upcoming boot camp in Phoenix, Arizona, one month from today, then uh, DM me on Instagram the word boot camp and we will chat about getting that last spot to you. But like I said, if you like this information, drop a like on the video. And you know, if you're on YouTube, uh, check out the links in the description. You can check out Words That Maker Want You. You can check out my book, which is currently free. Just pay shipping and handling. We'll ship that book to you anywhere in the world. You can also grab the audio book there. And also if you want to book a uh, call with me, a free strategy session to really uh, take your dating life to the next level, the link to that is also in the description below. But that said, I'm going to get out of here, man. We'll see you next week. Peace out.